What's up there, YouTube? What's up? Alrighty, so I started test number two on pack 14 and I was gonna do it on seven amps and I was just gonna let it go. And then about 12 hours into it, I was reading the manual because I had an idea. And let me tell you something. During the discharging of a lithium battery, there's three different settings. There's LiPo, Life, and... Um, Where'd it go? Lilo. I had this idea of why can't I just change it to one of the other cell types. All right, so here's what happened. I was gonna do another discharge capacity check on pack 14. I was gonna do it at a lower discharge setting. I tried 10 and the voltage sag on the anti-meter kind of went down a little far again. So then I stopped it, changed it to seven, and it didn't go down nearly as far. So I let it go for about 10 to 12 hours. Then I was thinking I can do other lithium batteries with this charger and I was thinking well why, why can't I just change it to another another setting so I can lower the cutoff voltage you know because the lipo setting it only went down it said three but the harbor freight meter said like 3.3 so if I can lower the low cutoff voltage I might be able to get a little bit more amp hours out of the battery pack it might actually resemble kind of what I made the 226 amp hours so I had the idea of change the settings to see what I could go down to but of course before I did that I looked at the manual can you freaking believe it so yeah let me let me read it to you here. There's three different battery settings and here's Horace so he's probably gonna hop up on my shoulder at any moment. There he is. Hi bud. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. Alright so we have lipo setting which I tried it on and it only let me go down to three volts. So there's also a Lilo setting and that one goes down to 2.5 and then there's the life, and that one goes down to two volts. So what I'm gonna do is try out one of these other settings to see if I can, well, first to see if it'll even let me. And if it will let me, then I'm probably gonna lower it down to like, oh, uh, what was I at? 3.3, so that's what, 30 off or 300 off or whatever that is. So I'm gonna lower it down to like 2.7 ish and see if that will get us a little closer into the ballpark with the whole voltage difference thing. Hi bud. And I'm also going to add to this test. I have, well, you know what? Let me just show you. Boom! You guessed it. All right, no, so I, I discovered another thing which is probably already widely known, but since I never really read all the directions, I don't know if it's actually in there or not. You can actually, there's actually um, a, a banana hole there too. So you can just insert these right in there and I don't have to just clamp it right over there on the pad. <laughs> so yeah, if you didn't know that, which I didn't, you can just stick them right in there. All right, so that is discovery number one. If you're not familiar with the channel, of course, I used to do a lot of fuse testing for the for the 18650s, and this was my fuse tester. So I've got a analog amp meter here and an analog voltmeter here, but I'm not going to be using the voltmeter here. Basically, I brought this over so I could use the amp meter. So the plan is to do another discharge test. This time, we're going to go through the amp meter so we can maybe kind of verify it on here. So how I have it hooked up right now is out of the charger to the positive bus bar, and I'm going to go through the Center. Hopefully that will maybe help out a little bit. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And then I come out the other side. I made another little alligator clippy lead thingy right here. And this is made from, it's either 10 or 12 gauge. I soldered on some alligator clips on the end. So I have it clipped on the negative bus bar. Then I'm going through the shunt and then back into the charger. I did tighten these screws down just a little bit. So they're nice and tight on the alligator clips. Hopefully that will help out. I guess we'll find out here in a minute. And of course, we're also going to add the trusty Harbor Freight voltmeter in this whole thing again too. All right, so let me turn on the battery charger and let's get to it. All right, so if I try to change the three volt low end setting, it won't go any lower than three. Let me show you real quick. If I'm on the LiPo, uh, 15 amps, 1S, and then right here you can change the low cutoff voltage. So it won't let me go any lower than three. All right, so that's it. So what I'm gonna do is try the other settings on here, the life setting, and then there is a Lilo setting. Let me try one of those and we'll see if we can get this going. All right, so we'll try the life here first. So let's try this. Let's just go down to like two seven. Or how about 273? All right, so we have a battery over voltage, so let's try a different one. 
Oh, okay, so it saved my last voltage setting, so I guess we'll just try that again. And if this does work, I'll just let the test go unless some of the, the wires get hot or something, and I'll try to do a time lapse again. Alrighty, so right here it says we're at 3.8 volts already, and on here it says 420. It says we're doing 15 amps, and on here we're roughly at 12 amps. So I don't know, you know, which one is more accurate or anything like that, but we will let it go from here and see what it does. Alrighty, well that is a little more like it. 15 hours and 10 minutes it took to do that test. And if you didn't get to see it, the voltage on the antimatter was at 2.72 and the Harbor Freight meter was at 3.09. So that is definitely a little more like it. Also, I want to say that I think uh, the voltage obviously was a little bit higher for this test. So. I don't know if the very first test was technically valid, but it was a good practice test. But um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. We got all the way up to 228 amp hours. That's pretty on par for what I tried to equal all the packs out back, it was like a year ago it seemed like, probably, or pretty close to it. The original capacity estimation was around 226. I'm at 228 according according to the antimatter, okay? So, I don't know. I mean, there might not actually be anything wrong with this pack. I mean, I still I'll probably still change that one that one fuse uh, on that green Fukushima shell. Fukushima shell on the green Fukushima cell and I don't know I might just throw it back into the power rack and continue on and by throw I mean you know gently place it in there I did have another pack in there that was the I guess you could say he would be the loser but technically he's the winner I could technically do a capacity check on that one and I could just leave it at the same voltage that I that I did with this one. I will recharge the pack with the antimatter and then I'll do a discharge at 15 amps again and we'll see what that one comes out to be. If it's a huge difference then I will come back to pack 14 and maybe rip it apart and do a bunch of little mini capacity checks on all the cells to see exactly what we got. If it's not too far off then I'll probably leave it and just continue on using it because on a normal everyday basis I mean obviously there's not a huge amp draw you know most of the time so it never really gets down that far unless I forget to switch it back over to grid power I don't know tell me what you guys think down in the comment section on your thoughts on this whole test discharge test capacity check and, and we also found out that when the antimatter is at 15 amps, according to the analog meter, it was only at 12. So I don't know, I'll have to see if I have another amp meter to check that with. I don't know, so maybe I could raise it up just a couple of more amps to get up to the 15 amp mark. But other than that, I don't know. But I mean, if you think about it, technically, I don't, I mean, I'm probably not using this charger how it's intended to be used. I mean, it, its real intention is probably for much smaller packs, RC car batteries and all that kind of stuff. I don't think it's technically designed to do a capacity check on 100 18650s at the same time because every charger is different as we know. I mean, the Opus, the Lido Kala, Fox Novo, and the X-Tar Dragon, I mean, they all charge a little bit differently and they all discharge a little bit differently you know and if you had five opuses they're all gonna charge or discharge slightly different so taking all that into account 
I mean, this charger slash discharger slash I can do everything in the freaking world charger is working out pretty good. I just hope I don't blow it up. All right, so tell me what you guys think in the comment section, either about the charger, the test, what do you think should happen next, uh, and maybe we'll figure something out and go from there. And I'll see you on the next one. Might as well recharge it. The manual, manual, uh, yeah, discharge amp. There's Horace. But the, uh, um, um, uh, uh, so what, um, bleh, um, uh, did I say 30 or 15? And just make sure these are nice and tight. All right, that one's good. And how many did we get? <clears throat> I already forgot. Uh, and, um, um, that fan's on over there, huh? It's probably really loud. Uh, I mean, obviously there's not a big ass draw like that. The antimatter was seven point... Uh, re, 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 I mean, sure, it, it's, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I don't, I, yeah, and the Harbor Freight Meter was, Jesus, yeah, that was Peter, interrupting a video.